TikTok as a platform has created a community and a space for free speech for 150 million Americans and counting. That includes many of the content, that's right. That includes many of the content creators that I just met with in my office. They talk about, they talk to me about a sense of family. They talk to me about a sense of community. They talk to me about a place that is helpful to their mental health and to their sense of belonging and well-being. They talk to me about finding a place where they can communicate with others like them and learn to love themselves even further. And I so appreciate them being that honest and vulnerable with me in terms of how they engage with TikTok. TikTok is also not just a space of, for building community, but it's used as an educational tool where you have professors and teachers providing content for students to engage with and learn from. That is what TikTok is for so many Americans. It's also a place where five million small businesses are selling their products and services and making a living. Making a living in a at a time where our economy is struggling in so many ways. So we're talking about free speech for everyday Americans. We're talking about small business owners who use TikTok to grow their business. And my question is, and we're gonna to pivot to the other part of the conversation, why the hysteria and the panic and the targeting of TikTok? As we know, Republicans in particular have been sounding the alarm, creating a red scare around China. They've been doing it in a variety of ways when it comes to economic competition, when it comes to semiconductor manufacturing, and when it comes to technology. In terms of TikTok's behavior and its, and its risk to national security, it poses about the same threat that like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter pose. So let's not marginalize and target TikTok. Let's have a comprehensive conversation about legislation that we need, federal legislation, to make sure people who use social media platforms are safe and their information is secure and their information is not being shared or sold to third parties. Because that's guess what? You can ban TikTok, but there are still data brokers who sell our data to other countries and businesses in other countries. They sell to the highest bidder. So let's not have a dishonest conversation. Let's not be racist towards China and express our xenophobia when it comes to TikTok because American companies have done tremendous harm to American people. Facebook looked the other way and allowed Russia to interfere with our 2016 election. This is a fact. This is well documented. I didn't hear any member of Congress talk about banning Facebook for doing this. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and other platforms have allowed lies and misinformation to live on their platforms, even though that information may have been harmful to others. From the January 6th attack to the genocide in Myanmar, American social media companies have been used to facilitate harm in tremendous ways. So let's talk about federal legislation to ensure the safety and security of everyone who uses social media. And part of that is related to banning data brokers and stopping them for selling our data to the highest bidder. Let's have that conversation. Let's have the conversation, by the way, 
Let's have the conversation around how many people who sign on to social media, media aren't even aware of what happens to their data as they sign up. Let's have the conversation about that. Allow people the option to opt out of having their data be shared with third, third parties and corporations and governments that use their data for God knows what. I mean, we've allowed facial recognition software to be sold to hostile governments around the world. Let's have an honest global conversation. This is not just about TikTok. This is about social media. Let's talk about social media monopolies and breaking up big tech. There was bipartisan legislation introduced last Congress that did not move at all. Obviously, we want to talk about some of the addictive nature of these algorithms. Let's have a broader, more honest conversation about social media and let's not scapegoat TikTok because they happen to be owned by a Chinese uh, organization in this time of heightened xenophobia since COVID. Let's have honest conversations.